Hi, I'm Dr. Tracy Marks, a psychiatrist, and I make mental health education videos. Today, I'm talking about ASMR. What is it? What triggers it? And does it work for everyone? ASMR stands for Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response. ASMR videos have become very popular in recent years, but the term didn't come into existence until 2010. Jennifer Allen created the term as part of a movement to draw attention to the phenomenon and give it more credibility among scientists. Since then, interest in the topic has grown and now there are hundreds of videos made every single day and podcast episodes of ASMR triggers. The research on it is still new, but it's developing. So that's the history behind it. Here's what it is. ASMR is a reflex response to a trigger such as a sound or something you see. It's a tingling sensation that starts at the top of your head and moves down your spine and to your shoulders. It doesn't always move though, and how far down it moves seems to depend on the intensity of the experience. Milder responses may only be felt in your head, but an intense response may send the tingles all the way down your arms and to your lower back. So ASMR is not a condition or a disorder, but a physiological reflex that some people have to certain triggers. And this reflex creates a sense of calm and is pleasurable. ASMR is similar to a more established phenomenon called frisson. Have you ever listened to someone speak or sing and felt so moved by what they were doing that you felt tingling or goosebumps on your skin? That's frisson. It's a physiological response to something that you hear or see that you find intensely pleasurable and exciting. The difference between the two, ASMR and frisson, is that frisson is stimulating, whereas ASMR is relaxing and calming. There are many kinds of ASMR triggers and what works for one person may not work for the next person. And here are some triggers that I've divided into four categories. First, you have mouth sounds. And some examples of these are chewing and whispering. Then there's repetitive sounds. And examples of these are tapping sounds, scratching, objects that crinkle, crumple, or crackle and falling rain. Next is watching an activity. Some examples of this are watching someone paint or draw, watching someone brush their hair or apply nail polish, watching someone open a package, or watching someone cook. I found this category interesting because it made me wonder if whatever it is that makes people have ASMR from watching these things is the same thing that makes these videos very popular on YouTube, like unboxing videos or cooking videos or even makeup videos. These videos are very popular even when the creator is not whispering or creating an ASMR trigger sound. Just something that made me think. The fourth category is personal attention and simulations. Examples of these are getting a haircut, getting an eye exam, getting a facial, slow body movements and smiling, as you can see, this is quite a variety. The first two categories rely on auditory stimulation and the second two rely primarily on visual stimulations. But oftentimes, the person making these videos called ASMRists will still whisper and add other sounds related to the visual simulation. The personal attention videos place you, the viewer, as the point of focus of the video. The ASMRist is usually very close to the camera and facing you, and this creates the illusion that you're in the room with them. Then they proceed to perform an activity on you like brushing your hair or stroking your face while they whisper affirming statements. Some people find this kind of simulation unsettling or even creepy. One study that I have referenced in the description found that mouth sounds were polarizing as study subjects found them to either be pleasing or irritating. Speaking of irritating, not all triggers are created equal and it will take some trial and error to find sounds or experiences that work for you to make you feel relaxed even if you don't have the ASMR. There is a caution to consider though with ASMR triggers. Although anyone can find some sounds unpleasant, a small percentage of people can react to certain sounds with intense anxiety or anger. And this may be due to the neurological condition called misophonia. Some researchers believe that ASMR may be on the opposite end of the spectrum from misophonia. So on one side you have misophonia, and then flip it around, you have ASMR. With misophonia, you react very negatively to common sounds like breathing and eating. If you have this condition, you can become unglued 
intensely angry and even self-harming when hearing these sounds that other people hardly notice. This condition usually appears around age 12 and is sometimes related to OCD. A person with the OCD tendencies can hear a sound and then need to perform rituals to manage the anxiety created by the sounds. If you have this problem, you would probably already know it and know to stay away from trying the ASMR experience. Even if you find the ASMR triggers positive, you still may not experience the tingling response and euphoric feeling that some people can achieve. One thing that may improve your chances of having the physiological response though, is getting into a flow state. A flow state is when you're intensely focused on something to the extent that you block out other things in your environment and even lose track of time. It's what people refer to as being in the zone. You can think of flow as a form of intense mindfulness. Try bringing all of your attention to the sounds or visuals as a way to get more out of the experience. So for example, if someone is crinkling paper, focus in only on the paper and how it sounds. If your mind drifts off to the color of the person's nail polish and you start wondering if they had a manicure for the video, you're losing focus. Simply bring your awareness back to the active focus of the video and the sounds and visuals that are being created. The research on ASMR is still new, so there's a lot of unanswered questions about it. Even if you never achieve ASMR, you still may find the process of visually immersing yourself in an activity or taking in the sounds as calming. Because at its most basic level, it's a way to engage your senses in a mindful experience. Watch this video for more on things that can trigger a flow state and this one on mindfulness as a remedy to mind wandering. Thanks for watching. See you next time.